We'll go through this. Okay. Uh, operations. Uh, 103, which is our newest truck, 2019, 68,000 miles, is down for the week with new ball joints, universal joints, tie rod, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Oil pan gasket is being covered under warranty because it was leaking. Uh, the shift cable was broken, so they're replacing that. Um, and a commercial inspection and oil change. And the ball joints, universal joint, a little premature on that truck, but it was a little premature on the other truck too, and the service tech thought it was a result of the full lock turns that we were having to do before we got the tarmac extension. So hopefully... Um, It'll help reduce yes. maintenance cost. Uh, David Zamoyski. So, so oh, yes. on, 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 on the all-wheel drive vehicles, it's a thing about, we learn, they learn that you have to replace all the tires instead of one at a time. You don't have the same issue, do you? We will, we have separate drive and separate steer tires, and they get... They get replaced with each other. So both fronts get replaced and then all four rears okay. got um, replaced all at the same time. I, I just wonder, because I know that that's what happened with the, uh, when, when they started going with the, uh, the first all-wheel drive vehicles. We were having, um, initially we were getting some weird wear on those, and just it was where we were taking the truck couldn't do an alignment on them properly. So we started taking them to Northampton for it. They've got, they've got the correct equipment for that. So we're seeing, we're seeing okay stuff with that tires and no, no issues with one tire wearing out before another. So, so when you said that some of this is covered under warranty, how much of it is? Uh, oil, oil pan gaskets covered under warranty. The um, uh, shift cable is covered under warranty because when they were taking the transmission out to replace the gasket it wouldn't come off so they're replacing it under warranty as well um the ball joints we are replacing okay. so it's just a ball yeah. yeah david zamoyski has been coordinating with deerfield fire to conduct those first responder certifications those are that's um through his separate teaching credentials so that's we we had discussed how we can't issue those certifications, but he has coordinated with them to make sure that they are getting their needs met. The Hadley Fire Department <clears throat> is, this has been a multi-year process, but they are finally getting their license to put a BLS ambulance in service. Um, Action Ambulance is the private company that covers their town, and part of that contract was that it would, they would help Hadley Fire get up to speed. So. They're putting the final touches on that, so we recently signed a mutual aid agreement with them, so that way, if we need a mutual aid ambulance in Sunderland, um, we can call on Hadley Fire, which will be that much closer, um, as opposed to <clears throat> normally Amherst is first due for Sunderland, and then after Amherst, it would have to be, well, it was Action, um, and then either AMR, Greenfield, or Northampton, so that puts in another service in the mix over on that side of the river, so that'll be good. Um, and then I've been requested out the town of Beckett Ambulance Department. Their director, he's working with Beckett and Otis. They have a very similar problem as to the one that we had here 10 years ago. And so they're looking to regionalize. So they were going to have me come out and just basically talk about South County um, and, and that makeup. And I think that's in a few weeks. Um, and I have kind of a canned report, canned PowerPoint that I do for exactly that. Uh, it's renewal time for our licenses, uh, OEMS renewal, our ambulance license, that is in, um, and so we should be getting expected usually late May, early June, that expires July 1st, so they come by that time. Our drug control license is also expiring in mid-June. Um, since our last renewal, they've since gone to a 100% online system, so they only accept payment through electronic funds transfer or a credit card. And I said, that's cute, I'm a municipality. Who do I send the check to? And how do I make sure it gets uh, connected with this application? And they said, we're only accepting electronic funds transfer and credit cards. Um, the town of Deerfield, Casey Warren, the town administrator, has a credit card. Um, so going back and forth with the town accountant and the clerk and trying to figure out what, and drug control policy, the decision was, We'll use the credit card and then we'll just put that 
you should be able to get your own credit a, a, a credit card for a, a Deerfield assigned credit card. Uh, years ago, the they were not. I, I think John might have had one, but otherwise it was kept locked in a in like the clerk's well, drawer or whatever. And yeah, so well, I haven't reapproached that. That's a, that's a yeah. trust issue. I, I mean, haven't. But there's nothing. There's nothing <clears throat> legally to prevent sure. you from that. That's a trust issue. Sure. So tell them tell them to trust you. Um, I haven't. I'm trying to coordinate with Casey to uh, get this payment made. Um, I haven't heard back from her. Tell so. them to trust you. I don't think we have a credit card in town. Well, it is the 21st century. Yeah, but but account accountants don't. You say it's a trust issue, and I will. I'll say that it may be a trust issue, but a lot it's of times accountants issue. don't like credit no, cards, and don't. auditors don't like. No, no, nobody, but, but nobody uses a credit card like Casey. E e oh, okay. Well, okay. And also, electronic funds transfers are a pretty normal thing. Not something. Uh, <laughs> I, I and again, see, I just know even. So I don't think it's unusual. I, I'm not saying it's unusual. I think it's yeah, I just antiquated. I yeah, I just don't think if you can wire money, wire money is so. Casey, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you might pay a few bills. Yeah, figure office. out how you can get it. Really. She pays for our like if we go to a conference or anything. Not uh, so of the course. Only one that does it. Not, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, we did much more. Otherwise, it's reimbursable. You. You 15 years ago now well i mean reverse. yeah well i'm not putting a 300 dollars pro card drug control, control license on my no personal credit card, card and then no, that's no, not I'm proper yeah i'm just yeah. saying yeah. otherwise you provide you your bank's, bank's ach you and, you and, and it yeah. automatically withdraws for accounting yeah we don't so. do pro card mm -hmm. they, they don't it's the same for everything yeah and when you have a umass credit card it's under your name and yours not the university's anyway um david zamoyski 23 years of service to Deerfield EMS and then South County EMS um, has announced that he will be retiring very shortly. Um, I, as of this report, he was thinking June 30th. Um, that was since updated today to July 7th. Uh, the extra week um, will fall in like the pay period warrant cycle a little bit more appropriately. So he was gonna do July 7th and uh, uh, we are going to make sure that we celebrate his service appropriately. Uh, details to follow. Um, we're also going to be doing another round of uh, per diem hiring. We have three um, suitably experienced and trained local EMT basics um, who we're going to look to appoint, as well as two current EMT basic per diems who have since completed the paramedic program and will need to be upgraded to paramedic. Um, this process is pretty involved. We have to, our orientation program is not just what we make of it, but also what OEMS requires and our affiliate hospital requires. So the whole process um, for an EMT basic usually takes two to three months um, to get them through that if everything goes smoothly. Um, so the town of Deerfield should be expecting those appointment requests very soon. Um, All right. Uh, let's see. FY24 budget. So we got this. The ambulance vendor was asked, leasing options, what is that? What does that look like? This is the financing institution that they use, and this was a quick example terms that he drafted up. He plugged in the $400,000 amount. The last estimate was three sixty seven if I remember correctly. So he plugged in four, we'd have to drill those numbers down, um, but basically this is what it would look like. You did some quick math about money down and... Yeah, I mean, it, and taking a quick look at it, if we do the $100,000 down, um, five years at 69,280, it'll come out to just shy of $350,000 for the 300 finance, so it'll cost us about 50 grand or 10 grand a year to do that. If we go with option number two, the seven year, with a hundred thousand dollar down, that comes out to uh, three fifty, and another seven times two is fourteen, so three sixty four. Um, 
but five years probably more appropriate. You know, it would be a payment of seventy thousand dollars every year, which is shy of seventy thousand every year. Um, we're going to have to up our uh, what we were setting aside. Cause yeah. we're setting aside fifty. Uh, yeah, sixty-two five. We've been putting aside. Um, yeah, and you're absolutely right. We're going to have to up that. I think the some departments they just like do a lease, right? They do a five-year lease and they just keep that annual expense as part of their budget every single year and they know they're going to get that ambulance replacement when they need to get it. Um, the downside of that is you're locking yourself into that, right? So if you have a tough year or another COVID or something like that, you're still on the hook for that, for that set aside um, no, versus if we're you know, trying to put money aside out of retained earnings. Sure. So I think, um, Tom, I think I heard an inhale there. Were you going to say something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I feel like this is, you know, this is more of a strategic decision, right, about how yeah. we go forward on budgeting. I'm you know, I think it's something that we needed to explore and we can present to finance committees when the time comes. Um, I know we talked about ordering the ambulance. It's two years out. Yeah. Looking at. I can tell you, um, just poking around on Facebook a little bit, I've been shocked that the number of communities spending million a million dollars on fire trucks. Oh, no, it's not. No, that's what they cost. And I guess I'm officially old because I remember them being between like 350 and That wasn't that long ago. You missed, you missed the whole 600, 700. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> the halcyon days. <laughs> well, I remember 750 for a tower, and Just now they're talking a million dollars for a pumper. I know. So, um, I guess it's just the way things have risen in cost and COVID hasn't helped anything and we can go down that long road. We don't need to. Um, Personally, I think that if, if we have $100,000 available for down, mm -hmm. it makes an awful lot more sense to do that because it, it minimizes the dangers of having a tough year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, yeah. It's just people get scared of big numbers. Yeah. But likewise, we need to we need to start increasing what we're retaining or putting away towards that ambulance because what we're doing now isn't going to cut it anymore. But the, no one's going to have a beef with doing that. No, I don't think so. This is just to me. This is just us doing our due diligence, saying, okay, yeah. you know, have we got the money to pay for it? If we don't want to pay for it all right now, here's the leasing option. This is what's going to cost. And and. That 499 is a pretty good rate right now. Yes. So so if you lease it, and you're, now you're going to pay for the next five years. So when do you plan on replacing the next ambulance? Probably sooner than that. I'm just saying it, yeah. right? So the only problem with five years is that you're going to you're going to really have to budget for two ambulances two. Right. being paid at the same time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So is that what you want to do? Not really. Not and then, and then how are you going to pay for your other equipment? <coughs> well, it leads to all these questions. Right. So. Well, I think that we should have all the questions answered before we go anywhere to talk with anybody. Sure. I think this is something we needed to uncover and figure out because I'm sure somebody's going to ask the question. Yeah. So we've looked at it, and you know, at the end of the day, is the fifty grand over five years worth it, or do we pay for the whole thing up front, like we've done in the past? Can I ask a question about this leasing? Sure. Um, <coughs> is this like lease to own? Is it just every five years you're going to get a new truck? Every. It is lease to own. It is least own. Yeah. Did, we, did anyone do a cost different? I mean, I don't. And, and this is a like a completely outfitted machine, or is this transferring the stuff that you have in your own truck into this leased vehicle? The. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Items that are end of life. I so some some things can be transferred over until they reach end of life. So those stretchers, the power loads, are good for eight years, 10 years, 12 years. And so we've been rolling those over, 
one set currently in our oldest truck is end of life. So that is included in the cost of the current ambulance replacement because we can't move that over. So that's, that's gonna have to be projected out on a capital replacement schedule. Right, I guess the question, um, there's a lot of things obviously that come up with lease um, and you know, um, what is the actual cost to, if once you own this thing, what is the actual cost versus if you bought it from right out to begin with? And that's something we'll have to learn if we seriously think we would consider this. Right, just some, just some back of the napkin math, Tim, when we're looking at um, it's option two with the hundred thousand dollar down, you know, and they estimate a four hundred thousand dollar truck, um, hundred thousand down. We would finance three hundred thousand, five payments at sixty nine two eighty. That would be about three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it would essentially cost us fifty thousand dollars to use somebody else's money for the five years, versus just paying the three hundred thousand dollars upon delivery after that hundred thousand. Um, down payment. So we're, basically, we're, we're we're talking about um, if we if we bought a three hundred seventy thousand dollar truck, um, we'd be looking at least um, eighty thousand dollars more expensive to do it this way. Well, if we bought a three hundred seventy thousand dollar truck, it would bring that four hundred thousand dollars down to three seventy. So you'd probably right. be looking just under four four twenty. If you don't just pay all up front, what else are you going to do with that money? I mean, it's, op it's opportunity cost. That's why people decide to, to lease. It's opportunity cost. What's what are we what are we what are we going to do with that money? Do we need it for anything else, or is it earmarked already for this and save the money? Because if there's a better thing to do with the use of that money, then by all means lease. But if there's not. Yeah, buy it. And I, 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 I'd rather see a three-year option, not a five-year option. Because you, I mean, and we I could mean, ask for that, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you need a, th you, you need a three because in, un unless you're willing to be paying, the, what, nine out of ten years, you'd be paying double, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we know, we know how long a, a truck lasts. Ten years. Yeah. About twelve uh, tops. Yeah, we've got currently uh, the that sixty-two thousand. We were planning on twelve years tops. Yeah. So frontline truck was never older than four. Second eight, and then the last one twelve. Right. So you yeah. got to look at you got to look at three. You got to look at three. If you if you're really serious consider leasing, you'll look at three years. Right. Could you could you reach back to these folks and yeah. ask them to send us a three-year plan? Just. Yeah. Just to see what it looks like. Yeah. And are, are there more than is there more than one place that does this? I mean, obviously, this is an exploratory thing, and I don't expect us to have all the answers. Um, but going back to my math, um, my my calculation shows that if we buy it versus we lease it and pay a hundred thousand down, it's seventy six thousand four hundred dollars more expensive to lease over a five year period. So, um, you know. I could be doing the math wrong, but that's my my calculation. <clears throat> yeah, and I, uh, Tim, I think if we if we make the decision that we want to lease, we can certainly explore, and we would look to our town accountant to see if there's any programs within the Commonwealth that can be offered. I think this was just an exploration to say, if things are bad and we don't have the money, here's another way that we could pay for this. Is 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 Lori working on the? Uh, USDA. So, uh, thank you for bringing up the USDA. She keeps reaching out to them, and they are non-responsive to her. Um, so, okay. if you have a contact at USDA, that could oh, well. um, double check. Yeah, she says that she's reached out at least once a week, you know, for the past month or so, and and um, just not getting any right away. I'm sure they're extremely busy right now, anyway. But uh, if we could, actually, if no, you could, fiscal year is September. September well, September then if we could connect those yeah. dots, that would be that would be great. My understanding about that, if it's the same lease program we're talking about, I mean not lease, but um, USDA program, it's that Massachusetts have, gets 300000 a year for this grant program. So 
that um, money is gone. That, that was not including the um, IRA money, the Inflation Reduction Act money. That's addition. Yeah. There, there's additional funding with that, too. The, yeah, the, the complicated thing with the USD, I know it's based, the percentage or whatever, the money is based on the individual municipality. So because we are three towns, each one of us, if it was just Deerfield or just Waitley, they'd get a different percentage or support. So I think that's part of the complicated question that um, I was thinking they were too busy to try to figure out. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think we could just, based on your, remember our conversation with Scott Source, he, he seemed to think that we were had a leg up because of the three towns. Yeah. So I'll just give him a call and find out what how come no one's responding to it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I did see that the uh, town of Deerfield voted to approve their share of the capital request for the purchase of the ambulance. I do not know where Sunderland and Waitley currently sit on that, though I know their share was a much smaller amount compared to Deerfield's. Um, well, we thought, Casey said it was on the warrant for your, both of your towns, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I haven't heard otherwise. So yeah. I would assume that I would hear if things were not going right. I, me too. Um, when I presented in both Sunderland mm -hmm. and Waitley, there was, uh, there was no I mean, there were questions, but no pushback or no, like, you know, oh, no, we can't. You know, in Whaley, as long as you do your homework, they're going to let you do, you know. Well, it sounded like they had a clever funding stream for it or something anyway, so. How much was it again? Wait, we share? Yeah. I think ours was 143 or something. So yours was... That was taking 100 out. I have it any second here. 100 in retained earnings plus, so, and then Deerfield's share was 143. So Waitley's share was not you. I thought you said that Waitley's share was 143, and I almost choked. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Deerfield's share. No, Waitley's okay. share is 46,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then Sunderland's was 86,500. Um, great. Um, the uh the life pack 15 request that or vote that we had taken here to purchase out of fy23 that was presented to the cipc but i saw it show up on the fy24 um approval um which is this next year. week anyway um uh so i th i guess that's that should have it should have oh, they knew that it was already pre-voted here yeah okay purchase and so but it wasn't coming so i think that's why it was put in the fy 24. okay but okay. it's not an issue it, it's not so town meeting is monday in deerfield so assuming that that and that's getting funded out of retained earnings um the great thing is our what is old is new again so our striker physio rep um, who was really great, disappeared for a while, and they groomed him to be like an area rep, and he's back. And so he came by and sat down. Um, so we've got, we want to purchase those three Life Pack 15s to replace the ones that we can't replace. Our two Lucas devices, which are the automatic compression machines, we got those on a grant um, in 2014 and 2015. Those are actually both end of life. Um, so they are eight and nine years old respectively. I sat down with him, he says, if you're buying these cardiac monitors, you've got trade-in, right? And I said, yeah. And he goes, great. So he factors those in. He said, if we place that order for the LifePak 15s, he can include three Lucas devices as well with all the trade-ins as part of that. Um, so we will replace those capital items as well as part of that LifePak um, purchase. So that's, that's outstanding news and it means that we will have a third Lucas now as well for the third ambulance. Um, so that will be standard across all vehicles. Um, all right, overtime. This spreadsheet represents a cumulative of about seven hours of going back and looking at all of the pay periods uh, through FY20. And I pulled out worked overtime from holiday overtime. So we can do apples to apples. The numbers that I had calculated for the FY24 budget um, were weighted heavily on uh, periods 
where we had more than one person out. So um, when we pulled all of the historical data back, I mean, you can obviously see, I think I did some calculations. Um, when we have two or more people absent, our overtime is almost double for those pay periods just because we're at skeleton staffing. But if we go all the way back, I think actually it is appropriate that we can reduce the number that we are using to budget for the FY24 uh, budget. I don't know that it is as great as um, some people would like it to be, um, but I think we've got enough data here now that I think we can, we can make a pretty good informed decision um, based on what number we should include. Um, well, we're, well, we have 86, even with the cuts, we're at 86,000 for overtime. We're at 55,000 um, for, for the holidays, yeah. So I, that's, so fi we're at 55,600 for the worked overtime, and that is, um, that is estimating 115 hours per person per year. Um, I think if we look at averages, and if we look at basically right well right now if you combine the two you have eighty six thousand five hundred and forty nine dollars for overtime that's more than you've ever used of actual expenses including so that includes the holiday time so that's why I don't understand. Yeah, what right. Yes. Yeah. So holiday, we've calculated holiday. That's based on the FY24 rate of 4838. That's the average overtime rate for all the employees. Um, times, what are we up to now? 13 holidays? Um, times Four, 10 people. 14 holidays, isn't it? Are we up to 14 now? With Juneteenth? Uh, whatever. Yes. I don't know. Plus um, you've got Patriots Day, I think it's 14. I think it's 14. Yeah, so that number is what it is, and that will come to uh, $50,000. That's assuming everybody works their full 40 on all of those weeks. Um, if people want to take eight hours off for those weeks, for those holidays, they put in for it just like they would vacation time or something. So uh, it's unlikely we would spend that full amount, but that would be if everybody is here at work. Uh, so then looking at just worked hours, um, if we look historically to all years, um, the average is only 102 hours, but we added full-time staff, which reduced our average significantly. Um, our average after the 10 full-time staffers um, went to 80 hours a year. That's super aggressive and that's assuming um, good times because good times have been had since the additional people. But I think, I think we can, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I'm, I'm looking for the boo to tell me how uh, how aggressive do we want to be on this with, with these historical numbers? How aggressive do we want to be on this over time? Well, I, I think what the one thing that's really important is to look, let's look at what you schedule mm -hmm. and what what is final rotation, okay? Because poor Zach is working like burnout. You know, you, you keep talking about people burning out but it's not evenly distributed overtime at all. Oh gosh. Uh, and mm. so I, the issue, the reason Can why I, overtime will never be evenly distributed um, because not everybody is interested in taking overtime. We can ask Zach um, how he feels about the overtime opportunities and why he may <coughs> want them more often the nice thing that happened since January is because the schedule is rotating, it means that more people are presented with schedules where at least during that rotation and some of the time, 
they would be in a better position to take overtime opportunities if there were. But, of course, I mean, I won't speak for Zach, but some people have families, some people travel, some people have a different work-life balance and never want overtime um, if it's offered to them. And some people gobble <coughs> it up. Um, you pulled my schedule out, and so you can see, I think the last page is what the schedule looks like normally. So that's like the five week rotation. Um, the, is it March schedule is at the end of the month, all the highlighted shifts are people who were moved from whatever their regular scheduled shift was into another shift to maintain staffing and not incur overtime. And then the April schedule. What are the red highlights? Those are the overtime. That's overtime that was incurred. And you'll see that they are at the end of the week. So these are like sick call outs where we don't have the, the luxury of being able to slide people around. Yeah. Um, and then the April schedule, this is, that was a snapshot basically April 1st, that was all the work, all the yellow, that we already did before going into April to move people around and make sure that all the shifts were covered. But if you know that you're getting to the end of the week, you had, you know, this would be the ideal time for you to be spending on time on the truck. I think if you look closely at that schedule, you will see that I spent 80 hours in March on the truck. Um, I, and, and that was reflective in the fact that we had little overtime. Yeah, so if you go back on the historical overtime data, um, you're right, we had little overtime. Thankfully, that was a very easy uh, right. schedule to juggle, but you'll see pretty consistently that that is within the, the parameters of you know, right. a, so a good week and a, you know, and a bad week and things right. like that. So if you, you know, if you intend to be on the truck half of your sh shift at the end of the week, then that's, that's works out fine, right? Well, except that uh, I have a many, many duties, just as any other department head has, and I am reticent to commit myself to an overnight Friday or Saturday night shift um, at the end of the week to save overtime for somebody who wants it. Is there a trend on when people call out sick? Um, I have, I have, I have every, every pay period if you want to. I, yeah, you're, pull, I, yeah, okay. Um, I'm not interested in the paper, I'm interested in your perspective. There is occasionally, um, um, there are occasionally, like as always, times where it's like, oh, that was a real convenient sick or something like that. Um, the nice thing about this schedule is that because because of the grouping and this and the stretches, it provides people with more time off in between their scheduled shifts, so they're not always bumping up against a two-day weekend and so oh that Friday would be real nice they're already off that Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday type thing um, I'm not gonna say that there aren't instances but that's that's part of managing people let me ask you a different way are most sick days individual days or are they two or three days at a time because I know when I get sick, yeah, it's not for a set six hour, eight hour, ten hour period of time. It's because I'm sick for a couple of days. Yeah, I, I would say probably, again, our scheduling because we work those longer shifts. Yeah, you know, like if you're it's, it's if you're out to... sick, it's like you're, you know, you take a, you're out that day, that block, and then you're out. And for, then you're out anyway. You're out for three days anyway. Okay. Um, Part of it is it's like being in food service, you know. Show up with the runny nose. You show up and oh, I get off. 
I get it. I'm just um, I'm just wondering whether yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there, yeah. There's a balance there too because you know if somebody's out for their 16 overnight, yeah, I'm, I'm scrambling to fill 16 hours quickly. But also, that's only one shift I have to worry about. Versus if they're going to be out for multiple days in a row, trying to find somebody who you know, can a per diem who can work Wednesday and also Thursday or a different per diem and then also Friday and, and struggling to fill a whole week's worth of hours versus one person who's like, yeah, you know what? I can come in at 3P and, you know, and work the overnight. That's, that's an easy call for me. Um, there's that give and take too. Um, okay. So, Carolyn, does this answer your questions? I mean, I don't want to belabor this. I, I, I feel like there is adequate funding in there at $86,549. You, you feel like what? I feel like there's adequate funding at $86,549. What is that? Okay. So it's access 55000 I think your... You're combining the, the holiday yeah. stuff, and I'm not sure it's, it's... Well, then then I feel like then if we take out the 50, then the 36, 549 is adequate. And, and we can check every month, you know, we check the scheduling, but I think it's going to be adequate. I, but what are you, what are you basing that calculation on? Uh, going through the, if you if you're working, if you look at the overtime for all all of these overtimes are at the end of the week, and we've you've scheduled full days with like a 24 hour. So the majority of the overtime is is you know you can catch it at the end of the week. Okay, but that 86, I, so I'm looking at historical numbers here. I've included the actual expenses on your spreadsheet. So average worked OT over the years has decreased despite increases in, I'm talking about expenses here. Despite the increases in pay rate, average worked OT has decreased. Um, and that's including time when we only had eight people and COVID and we had multiple people out and flu clinics and things like that. That's still, that average is still $40,000, which on top of the calculated holiday pay, which we know what it is because we know how many holidays are going to be, um, that would bring us to, that would change the overtime line item um, to the $40,000. Um, that is equivalent to, let me see if I can calculate this real quick. But I think that the March pay period, if you look from the March pay periods compared to the earlier in the year pay periods, there is quite a difference in the scheduling. Yeah, well, and so I don't think that it, you can really compare it from last from the years before because what you told me last year and this is what I went to the finance committees with is that we would be cutting in half our overtime and it does look like that so yeah I so I really aggressively cut the overtime budget um, for FY 23 uh, based on my estimations right um, but FY23 really didn't kick in until January of this year, according to you, right? Well, we, so we can look at those averages, right? Um, the reason I compiled this historical data was that we can compare actual stuff, not feelings, not a fluke. Right. This pay period right. was super light, and we're going to budget the whole year on it, right? Right. Um, I'm just going by and looking at every single pay period. I feel comfortable with the 86, 5, 
49 total. How do you get to that number? Include, you add, you add in 36, 549 plus your 50. But, so, but how are you getting that 36, 539? That's, was reduced, if you reduced your 55, 950, 950, right? By 20 more thousand. Where's that 20,000 coming from? It's Deerfield reduced 10, and then the other two towns reduced 10. That's the 20,000 that the Finance Committee wants. That's the, what the Finance Committee wants. What, what happens if you're wrong, Carol? We have less retained earnings. That's all. And we have an experience with what the scheduling is going to do. If we look at it every month, I, I think that we'll have, I think we'll be able to figure out what our experience is. But I think we already have that, don't we? I mean, we've been doing this for 14 years. No, we haven't. We haven't done it on, the, on the, what the schedule is now. We've only been doing it since January, even though we've had 10 full-time people since April of last year. There's the new schedule didn't kick in until January. There's going to change in the way Zach scheduling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the new schedule average is a is a significant decrease. Um, also, since the new schedule is, we've only had one pay period with more than one person absent, um, and so that's really a huge X factor here. Um, that you can see at the bottom. You know, I I did all these calculations, right? Like the difference between two or more people out is you know twice as much. Um, if we have the new schedule and everybody's here and you know we don't have anything else going on then yeah I think we can significantly slash that line item but I don't think that that is I don't think that's fairly representative of what a reality could be that if COVID comes through the department again and we have six weeks eight weeks of multiple people sick we're gonna see that spike again in overtime well, since some of the overtime is between six and seven thousand dollars a pay period, ten thousand dollars one way or the other isn't going to make a difference. Yeah. So, the, so that those high, for the or purposes of clarity, those high overtime pay periods are pay periods with holidays, and some of those pay periods have one hundred and twenty-eight hours of overtime included in them. And so again, I put that on the spreadsheet just so we can be really clear about what we're looking at. Okay. I know I, you have like a stack of- I have of, every single pay period I, here. I, I invested it, in looking at them. It's, yeah. okay. That, okay. Um, and I have every single so, holiday listed here so that we know. But it's, it's just, I feel like Zoe, that if you are truly working 80 hours a month on the truck, on the average, and you know that people tend to, you know, you're running into overtime issues at towards the end of the week, then I feel like we, if we watch it, you're going to be able to handle it. Okay. Um, I, am, I am not in a position to work more than that on a truck. I have too many duties here as an administrator, cer sure. certainly I'm during sure. the week. So I want to just at least... And I don't think Carol's asking I'm for, not asking to for more than that. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just, I think if you are able to do the 80 hours on the average, then I don't think we're going to run into any issues. If we do, and it results in fewer retained earnings, or less availability to, return, retain, to use retained earnings, what what is the cost of that in terms of our execution, our ops? What do we do with that? Uh, ambulance? Yeah, yeah. But because we're already we already have to adjust our retained earnings because it's not adequate. I, okay, I get that. But so we're already have to look at them <clears throat> anyway, John. So okay, so essentially you're saying that we want to operate skims more on the back of retained earnings than of town budgets. That that's a cent yeah, kinda Carolyn. You asked what what would what would be the default and the default is we would have 
less retained earnings. Right. And we already have but to revisit it. I am saying, those. yes, and we already have to revisit it. But I'm saying if we consciously talk about the, the, the scheduling every single month, right. I think we're going to be fine. But, but if you're wrong, you are putting the ops of SCIMS more on the backs of retained earnings than you are formerly of town budgets. We will be back just, in the same yeah. place where we have to adjust retained earnings anyway. We'll just have to adjust them higher. We're basically, we're, we're, we're robbing Peter to pay for Oh, I know. And, and, and we started down this slippery slope a couple years ago, and we keep reducing those retained earnings. My, my personal philosophy was to leave the retained earnings alone so that we wouldn't have to deal with getting more money for ambulances and things as we went into the future. Instead, we've kind of cut into that because different towns have had tough years, and I understand trying to be fair to all financially, but at some point in the future, we're going to have to go back to the town's hat in hand and say we've reduced our retained earnings to try to keep our numbers down or we've had our numbers reduced. Now we're coming back and we need an increase. And my question becomes, when is it ever a good tax year? Right. It's yeah. never good, John. Right. I'm but you know we have to adjust retained earnings. So let's adjust. Let's say that we we, we got to make, you're, we're going to have to go and ask people to cough up more money one way or the other. Okay, because we're not covering the cost of the ambulance. Isn't that correct? Well, so we, 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 we then, never we, we so, never have, have. So what we have? Yes, we did until this big COVID increase. We 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 had two hundred fifty in the bank for the ambulance. So 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 my I guess my question would be, are you better off cutting it? You know, cut the budget now. Redu or re I'm not going to say cut. Reduce the budgets. Re re redu is, it, is it better to reduce the budget now, only to come back next year and double increase next year? How how would that how would that we're, how would you sell we're, that? We're giving we're giving a good uh, we're giving a good try to reduce the overtime. I have gone to the finance committees last year yeah. to argue that we needed two additional full-time staff, which was a huge jump in expense. The idea was we were going to cut the overtime in half. So what I'm saying is now we're, we got the 10 people on, we started this new schedule in January, we're supposed to be cutting the overtime in half. What I'm saying is we're cutting the overtime in half, we're going to give it a good run. And, this is and, what we're delivering, what we promised. And, and again, I mean, budgets are, are, are created all the time knowing that you're not going to be able to deliver on that. We're going to try. We're going we're gonna to hope that not, not as much snow falls. We're going to hope. Jonathan, I went to the finance committees with Zach telling me that we were going to cut the overtime in half. So now we're going to cut the overtime in half. And if it doesn't work, then we got to look at it as the boo and say, what are we doing? We had we got ten, 10 people on full time now. What, what's that going to do to our expenses? OK, I, 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 I just think that we are looking for perhaps an unrealistic goal. Can I um, interject if uh, everyone has a minute for me? Sure. I, uh, Zoe, I wanted to make sure that I'm looking at the documents you're looking at. File um, yesterday that says payroll OT tracking. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Yep. So in the bottom corner, the, the bottom of the last page, it talks about actual expense. And it has worked OT, holiday OT, and total OT. Yep. And so, um, basically, you know, um, I wondered if you had a projected fiscal year 23 total. And I want to make an observation that I'm sure everyone's aware of, but, and maybe, maybe this is, maybe it's still prevalent when you're doing a per diem. So correct me if I'm making a wrong statement. Hire two new people. That means you're guaranteeing 
26 or 28, depending on whether it's 13 or 14 holidays of paid holiday overtime. Now, I don't know how you handle that at per diems. Maybe they get paid overtime as well. And so it's a wash. Um, and then if you look at, if you look at a 20, 21, 22, they're all roughly, I mean, 21's an outlier maybe, but it's saying that the total overtime is 73,000. So what's the total overtime projected through the end of fiscal year 23? Uh, if you applied the averages you're talking about, what would it be? Yeah, I did some back of the napkin math for the Deerfield Finance Committee and uh, I, so, my scribble here says projected 82,000, um, but actually it might be, I recalculated that, I think it's mid, like it's 73, 74,000 because the, we went through the bulk of the holidays. So if you, yeah, so if you looked at the expense report and you just divided it out and then multiplied it, you'd get 82, but really we're through all those holidays. So I think it's going to be 73, 74,000. Okay, so there's basically been, over the last four fiscal years, project, if that projection's correct, there's been no savings in overtime. Uh, that is not accurate. Um, well, that's what I'm trying to understand. I don't understand if the uh, holiday OT is every year it's 50000 or whatever it is, then how are we ending up at the end of the year with these lower numbers? Because when I, when I look at the budget that we talked about at the first school meeting when we talked about this, we were looking at 121000 including holiday. So why do these numbers look different? I, I'm just trying to understand. I don't... Well, position. I'm just trying to understand why. Well, what's and that's why I fe feel, feel that the eighty-six thousand five hundred and forty dollars, five hundred and forty-nine dollars, is enough, because Zach is coming or Zoe's coming up with seventy. Even in the high seventies, you still have a ten thousand dollar cushion. The reason why the holiday line item is increasing. I mean, one, we had we had additional full timers, but we have one or maybe two more ho two, two more holidays now one one, one more holiday two, now two. plus the cola plus the step right so it's we're multiplying their rate increases by one and a half um so that holiday number is going up we since adding since adding the two full timers the average overtime has gone down 20%, um, and the overall overtime has trended over the whole time period from about 42 hours a pay period down to 24 hours a pay period. So we're seeing that trend down, um, and that includes things like COVID clinics and the Waitley, all those details that get reimbursed anyway. Um, the actual, the, the numbers I calculated on the budget are like worst case scenario, right? Because if we don't, if we don't spend it, it's an enterprise fund, right? So it rolls over and retained earnings. Um, and the reason why we see actual holiday expenses over time under what was budgeted is because not like many people will choose to take eight hours off that, that week or something you know, as part of a vacation. So, um, so we're not paying that overtime to them. Okay, so that's, that's good. That's, that helps explain um, some of this. I, I, I was, you know, just curious because like the budget projected 121 and now I, I know you reduced it and um, now that you're being asked to reduce it again. So I was just trying to understand because um, when I worked in a union job, yes, I could take, I could take time off and and not take the holiday pay so I'm, now i understand that um, yeah and and i'm for the record i'm saying that looking at these new numbers i think we can further reduce that overtime line item i just want to do it based on 
like this evidence and this money and I just don't want to do it like because it feels right I want to make sure that we're making an informed decision um, that's that's what I'm asking I think it's informed on uh, Tim if you look at the the back side of the sheet budgeted for FY 20 through budgeted for FY 24 in the right column it shows you pay the average pay for overtime yeah in FY20 was $40.28. In 24, it's estimated at 48.38. I mean, that's yeah. a 20% increase. Oh I mean, yeah, no, I understand that 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 uh, that pay pay increase factors into it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I was sort of asking, maybe the per diems also get holiday pay when they work a holiday. Um, they do not. It's one of the problems with the bylaw is that um, there's no incentive for per diems to work a holiday um there's no additional pay for that yeah there's common. yeah um so, so so when you pay when you pay some so when you when your people work that week what are they how's their over how it, what pay rate is it time and a half or is it straight time uh for for any hours over 40 is time and a half so if they work for typically they'll work their full schedule which is 40 hours now is that by bylaw yes yeah they work the 40 hours and then get paid for the holiday. Wow, which that's is interesting. Nice. That's an interesting bylaw you guys Oh, have. it's a, it's a, it's. <laughs> so. It's not union. That's if you why. work, if you work, I can see time and a half. Right. But if you're off, why are you getting time and a half? Tim? No, if, you're not, if you're, so if you physically work 32 hours. Yeah. You're getting paid for 40 at, at your normal rate. There's yeah. no time and a half. Correct. Yeah. Right. So if you take that time off, you're, there's not any Absolutely extra right. 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 But if you're not scheduled to work, you should not get time and a half when you're not scheduled to work. But I I don't. Any time. I, I think I'm. That's what I'm uh, hearing. Yeah. <clears throat> the eight-hour holiday counts towards your. I understand that. That's that's the head scratcher. Right. No, no, it doesn't. It's a bonus. If you worked. Yes, if your work, if that's your RSO, regularly scheduled shift, yes, you're working. But if you're not working that, you it's get, not. You get just your hourly pay. You should just you should get just your just hourly pay. pay. You shouldn't get yes. time and a half. Right. right. Uh, and, and you may, I, and that may be the bylaw. Is, I'm, I'm just saying. This was, this, yeah, I. Um, it's very this, generous if it is. This. Does that, you know what I'm trying to I say. I understand where you're going. Yes. So if Monday is a holiday. Right. The week starts on Sunday. Yeah. And yeah. somebody works Sunday, they had Monday off for the holiday. Yeah. And then they worked Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. They worked 40 hours plus the eight hours holiday. Right. Would be what somebody would normally get because of the way the bylaws are written. The eight hour holiday counts towards your 40 hour total, so that Friday shift then becomes overtime. This goes back to the way that this bylaw was interpreted by the town administrator, the town clerk. Like, and, and it's it's a clunky bylaw. Like I'm sure the council looked at it. I'm sure it, it, it was it was written before like we had people even working on it. Like why would anybody work on a holiday type thing? So, um, all right. Oh well, well no, that, and, that, and that's oh I understand yeah. I understand that because I I worked with I worked with our way people my entire my entire career and and I and, and I've argued the the same the same thing. So. But because, like, if you take a if you take a day off, right, and then all of a sudden you some of you want to work on Saturday, and the guy says, "Well, you, you're not paying me overtime until I get to 40, so why would I be working on Saturday?" That's not what we're saying. This is a holiday ho holiday pay. Mm -hmm. I gotta look at that. So, all right, so we're not gonna solve that problem now. No. I, well, Carolyn, but but it actually, but Zach Zach is trying to do something that other departments don't, and the fact that. And the fact that you don't look at the police officer's duty time. If they're on duty, that's not in this budget, right? So if Zach sends his people to the football game at time and a half, it's in the budget as time and a half. That's right. How is that fair? Right? Because he's getting reimbursed for those hours. So why should that, that, that should be kind of like, almost like a different, a different fund, different funding mechanism. Item. It should be a different funding mechanism because it's not. It, it, like, 
have well because you, it's because like police we're, details, right? Be, right, because we're start we're start not we, people are starting to look at the budget much. So we're, we get a million dollar budget. We're talking about twenty thousand dollars. Let's be serious right. yep. to start with. Okay. Yeah. That being said, but are we treating the budget fairly right. the way we're looking at it? And 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 so if you're getting reimbursed, if you're getting reimbursed for those hours, should they be overtime hours, or should it be another separate it, line? There item? should be a separate line item because you're being reimbursed for it. It shouldn't count against operations. We brought I we brought this up at a boom meeting previously about a detail revolving fund or a detail fund because the other thing too is if treehouse is used to paying fifty dollars an hour for a cop you know, you have a detail rate, right? And have it not be over time and all those things. Mm -hmm. The question was whether we could have such a fund along with our enterprise fund. Um, and so, I, just, I don't see why not. Yeah, um, and so then it would be establishing a rate and, and right, making and sure that it's- we should try to do yeah. that. Well, we because if you, if, if, you, to if you think department. about it, if you really think about it, you throw in of the police overtime or detail time into the budget, what happens in our budget? Right. Oh, it's, especially it's, especially if they're doing a big paving job. Right. And they're well, out there all side, summer. I just come up. They're doing sidewalks. They're, I'm, they're probably yeah. doing sidewalk right. detail. Yeah. Or, right. Or, or yeah. right. Or or five tens having a. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, because we got to move on. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to propose that. And, go ahead, Tom. No, no. I I just I just I I just want to I I just want Zach's overtime number and Carolyn's overnight, and so. What what is Carolyn? What is right. Carolyn' proposal? What what is Zoe's proposal? And, and, and what I'm saying is, 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 is it sounds like they're off by what you guys? So it's a Twenty thousand. I think they're difference. close. I, 20, no, I think they're close. Are they Carolyn? It's we're, all, we're I'm estimating Zo Zoe just talked to Tim and said he's in the seventies, like seventy something. Well, if you projected that out, and I'm saying that it's you, it's we're the eighty six. Okay, so. If we we're went, fine. Okay, if we, well, that's your judgment, and, and I get that. Right. If, if we go with your number and we guess wrong, we're not going to visit retained earnings on this. We're going back to the towns. We're going to say, you guys guessed wrong. We need you to fine. fix your mistake. We have to look at this and be serious we, we, about this before we go and ask the town for more money. Okay, but if, we're, if, if, if you're wrong, in your assessment. No, no, it's not. It's not no, Carolyn. I'm not, yeah, if, I, if we are wrong. Okay, but if this proposal right? is wrong, and, and Tom, it is being pushed by finance committees. I understand that. I we are going that. to go back to the finance committees and say, you forced us to be wrong. You need to now go back and have a special. Well, I had a conversation with Trevor, and Trevor told us we should put the number that we think is right forward, and he would support that number. That's what he told me, and and, and I believe Trevor, mm -hmm. and 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 so I'm I'm I, that's why I want to know what we think a true number is. And I think the finance committee at the end of the day at our meeting, the feeling I got was if we debated this and we came back with a different number, they would take it, right? Or the select board who was present. We just we just voted they still, they we voted support. the original number first. And then, as a select board, and then we voted the finance committee number next because I feel that we can get this. We can do it for less than eighty-six thousand. My only concern is that I'm fine with Zach plugging holes or Zoe plugging holes in the schedule when it's needed. I get concerned about the number of hours being plugged because of all the other duties that have to happen. And I, I only bring it up because. And we can't compare to police and highway because they each have admin people. And we've discussed that before here. And I think the feeling was Zoe would rather do the work themselves and not have an admin person. Um, I think it's more efficient because we, they have three calls a day. And, and people should, on the average, so people should, in, the, in a period of a week, be able to get the admin stuff I'm, done. I'm, I'm worried we're trying to, to fill a budget hole on the back of Zoe, yes, and it, and and wait, but let, let me just and I and I fear that it's a slippery slope, and if something 
Again, there are only so many things you can do in a given week, okay? And if something slips because he's feeling the need to be on a truck instead of doing his other ancillary duties, that someone's going to say, ah, he isn't very good at his job. And you know there are people out there that will say that, Carolyn. Uh, yes, but we can look historically. He's squeezed, she's squeezed at the end of the week. So if you do, mo if you plan most of your admin stuff at the beginning of the week, then you should be able to handle the end of the week. S on some, the truck. Sometimes that's not possible, as you know. And again, I'm I'm worried that we are saying, oh, we'll just let her do it. Nah, that's okay. I I feel. Why don't, can, can we can we can we find the middle ground? I, I don't think we're gonna. Let's just say that we're going to do 10 instead of 20 and call it a day. Otherwise, we're going to keep going around in circles. I would make a motion that we find the middle ground between the two numbers. Carolyn, where were you at your number? I was at 36,549 for the overtime, okay. worked overtime, 36, and 50,599 yep, for holiday time. Okay, that and that includes the average of 10 employees paid at the highest rate, 48.39. Okay, that is, let me see, um, that is an average of 1.4 hours per person per week, which is, um, and, the, and the reason I was basing that on that yep. is because if you look through all the, yep, yep. Historically, yeah, okay. It shifts um, and not really. If um, here's my concern. I think that basing it on the historical numbers, I don't think that's that far off. I am worried though if multiple people are out, we get another COVID, something like that, and this number balloons, that it's going to be used to point to a failure of the scheduling or something else. I don't like the negative inferences from like, we're gonna review the schedule every single meeting and making sure that like everything's no. copacetic. I just wanna make sure that like, if we overspend that line item, that we understand that like. If, and I, I also, don't wanna, my, I also don't wanna micromanage. No, but if we look at the schedule, we will know if there's a problem. If, if, if there's another COVID, if, there, if people are call, call, calling out sick in a different kind of schedule than it looks like, I think it's really important that we do this this way so that we have a reasonable basis to go to the towns and say, we have to readjust our retained earnings. We've made a really uh, herculean effort to get this correct, the overtime correct. There is no fluff in our budget. We, we go over this all the time, right. and, and that shows good stewardship. That does not mean micromanaging. We're not sitting here and saying, Zoe, how come you worked only uh, Friday for But I sort hours? of, yes, we are. You, you, you did no. do that. You did do that, Carol. No. I'm looking at, okay, what's the shift schedule? Well, that's, what that, shift? But that's exactly what you just <laughs> no, didn't do. It. What, no. What is, the, what is the shift profile? I, you have, I and mean, that is different. We already have the historic shift profile. Has it changed at all? That's what I'm saying. We have historic data. So what you're doing is looking at the data compared to the new schedule at month by month and saying, is there any change? And, and if there is a change, what's the explanation? Well, we get more people sick. We, got more, we have another COVID situation. We have- So would you come up with a number? Uh, yeah. Is Carolyn close to what she was talking about? Uh, let me just double check this calculation for a second make sure that my formula is I think here. it's just really important it's to verify what we're, you know, we have the, this is no different than doing the Comcast. We're meeting after town meeting when people have more time. We're going to go over the Comcast stuff. And so we can have an explanation on, the comp, on what we're doing for collections so we can honestly say, to the town that we're doing, to all three towns, we're doing everything we can to collect every dime. We're, we're in the high percentages, but 
well, can we get another two or three percent? You know, what can we do? The problem is, it is all on Zoe. So we need to have Brenda, we need to have myself, we need to have Tim, whoever, who's ever interested, sit down with Comcast and say, how do we squeeze out that four, next three or four, five percent? And where does that go? That goes into our retained earnings. And that's the kind of stuff that we have to do if you're going to go and ask for more money. You can't ask people for more money if you have not made a huge effort to be more accountable. $38,702.40. Is what you come back with. Yeah, that would be... That's, 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 that's like based on the average of the 10 full-time and the new schedule and kind of a mix of bad times and good times. Um, so would you say it was thirty-eight? Thirty-eight thousand seven hundred and two dollars and forty cents. Seven hundred and two dollars and forty cents. Yeah. And this is, and then you add in the um, fifty thousand five ninety-nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, oh God, we're gonna have to. Everyone's gonna have to revote this all over again because it's a different number too. But that's all right. Um, let me. No. <laughs> We're in within 15, with 15 or 1600. I'm just going to ask this question, Carol. With the, I know there was discussion the other night with Treehouse to expand their license to be able to do other things, and I assume it's events, concerts, things of that nature. Have we been contacted at all? Or Zoe, have you been contacted at all about providing standby for those increased events as of yet? No, I read in the paper that they had some sort of public safety um, meeting for the increased capacity or whatever, but there hasn't... It's mostly traffic. Um, okay. There haven't been any conversations about ambulance egress or, or like things I'm like just, that. Are or they like, or standbys or okay. things like that. They're well. working up to four or five events this summer of 1,500, but Yankee Candle is like 5,000 a day. I'm just looking Average to see that's there. Is I mean, there it's gonna not be every day is 5,000, but on the weekends, there are even more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so concerned about the head count as I am. Are there going to be increased requests for crews to go stand by over there for these events, which would... I wouldn't think so, but there might be To your point, calls. it would add to the overtime, but it would I, also I, add I, I, revenue. But I think you're going to get asking revenue. A lot, we're asking Zoe to do a lot of things. I know. I, I would say next year that part of the budget, budgeting process, what we should do saying, okay, out of the $36,000 of overtime, 5000 8000 10000 yeah. 6000 went to the, the yep. I, I would call them details. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And that we're, and, and, and I, and see, you don't, you don't see in the police budget, I'm just saying please, you don't see their details. That's not in a budget. Right. Right? And, and so, so how much does a police, the only, the only person that knows what a police officer makes is the accountant, because most of the time people aren't looking, no one on town meeting floor is looking at the police budget with the detail there. If they did, all of a sudden, like, oh my God, how much are we spending on well, overtime? When police do a detail, are they paid at a detail rate, or are they paid at No, a, they're paid at a detailed rate. So it's they depends. don't get overtime that, with 401k or no, retirement? No. This is, it's all in a revolving account, it's set okay. aside. It's and and, okay. and you ha and you have to they got really strong good negotiating teams because you have to have that money set aside before they do the detail we had to f seed it up front but then it gets charged it it just okay it is self-funded tom huh it's self-funded it, it is but well it's seeded up you are, are, you, are you are you are you you may have to appropriate money into that because that money has to be we seed you, it. You're we breaking the law if you're not. No, if we seed it up front. Just, just saying. You, you have to have. You, you seed it up front. You're like losing your form. You seed it up front. Put the money up front. Uh, do so we that need you to make the payroll? All right, so it we've comes got a, in we've got a very, you, You're about to lose your voting quorum. So we've got a motion on the floor to go to instead of the twenty thousand reduction, a ten thousand dollar reduction. But I would amend it to whatever Zoe's number No, it's, it's number 38 No, 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 the, no he's Jonathan referring to the motion that I made. A motion. And I'm saying that I will amend that to Zoe's number. Yeah, it's within um, $1,500. I will amend it to Zoe's number. 
And there is also a reduction in the holiday pay too because David is retiring, so the person we're bringing on um, won't have as much seniority as well. Love those so, experience. But if you bring on a paramedic, no, nope. he's still gonna be okay. No, he's he's got like twenty okay. percent. So okay. Um, okay, is this something we need to vote on? The number. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I have a mo. I, I made a motion. Um, to, to amend the FY24 budget line item for overtime worked to $38,702.40. Not including holiday overtime. Not including holiday. How close were we to the number? Um, well, mine was 36549 so the difference. I mean, it's... Less so than two thousand dollars. Fifteen hundred bucks. What's a little bit? It's okay. fine. We just have to revote it all. That's all. But okay. that's fine. That's. The Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. Oh, Tim from the phone. All right. Are we seconding? We're second the, the thirty-eight. Okay. Yeah. So we got a motion made by Jonathan, seconded by Tim. Okay. Why? Because I'm sitting in his chair. Yes. I can't second. And we're okay to have Tim seconded on the phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure we're all within the law. Yeah. No, we're we're good. Okay. We just don't have the any, ability any, for him to zoom. Any okay. any any further discussion? Going once. Going twice. No further discussion. All right. So I'll call a motion. All those in favor of the motion as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Carolyn. Uh, um, I don't vote. Vote. Oh, that's right. I. Okay. That's 4-0. Yep. Motion passes. Okay, so four zero. Zoe, what you have to do is you have to let Brenda know tomorrow. Oh, trust me. I'm going to let all three towns know immediately. <laughs> right away. Right tonight. Yes. All right. Uh, I got to go be stamped them now. I, I can go to my other meeting. <laughs> yeah. what, do you have any other business that you need to do? Oh, no. Um, Wait, what? Uh, the Whitney is thinking shuttle several times a day. I, I know. I, I know. I know what you're doing. You're I think okay. We're okay. You're okay. But you, you, you can't you argue can for, for more money no. until you've made no. a real good effort. No. My business has always gone there. I, I, I would never. Have, I would never have thrown the, the other two people in to say you're going to reduce by fifty percent. Matter of fact, there was a guy that said no. Who would that be? That person. But anyway. So would you have anything else you uh, no, that? once we're out of budget season, I would like to create like a write-off, either subcommittee or working group, to look Just at the to come on the policy, right? At, at initially, yeah, to figure out exactly what yeah. this policy is and 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 make a recommendation. So. I ask you to make a note. Yeah. For once we're done with the budgets, put that on there. Let's put a discussion about a detail rate on there. Yeah. And let's get that figured out. Yep. Yeah. Great. Because I think that'll that'll help. As he's, you know, pull the holiday overtime out, let's pull the detail stuff out of it as well so that we can show exactly where it is. Because we may get to a point where we're doing a bunch of details and it drives the overtime but, up. And well, the only thing is, well, yes, it's good to track it. But the money does go into the enterprise fund. So that's fine. I mean, it does end up in the retained earnings anyway. I would also, once budget season's over and we're not meeting on a monthly basis, I would like to set up a, as we say, an ad hoc to create a anniversary story that demonstrates to all the nays naysayers that are out there how pivotal this organization is. And I, and, uh, and I, I agree with you, but I don't really think there's a lot of naysayers. There isn't, I, that's fine. Who, who I really don't. Give, I don't know. If there were two of them, I want to tell them they're naysayers. I, I think, but to Jonathan's point, not so much the naysayers. I think it's a good story to tell. It is a good story. That can be shared. It's a good yeah. service. Well, we, I think it becomes a model. Wonderful. It becomes a model for other opportunities within towns to share services and right. regular guys. Right. So I would like to do that. I, I mean, I'm not saying I'd like to be on it. But I'd like to be second. 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 All right. So, uh, do you have anything else to worry No, that's it. Do we need anything else to go? Can, can we adjourn? I think so. Tom, what's that? Motion to adjourn? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 4 0. <laughs> 
Okay. Declare us out at 729. Okay.